All right, it is a brisk morning. Um, Monday morning, 30 something degrees. Um, and uh, let's see, I'm curious, is this NYPD police officer ticketing this guy in a bike way? I guess no. Guessing no. Um, I want to talk about <laughs> uh, a, uh, let's see. I don't know what I'm going to talk about. But how's it going? Wow, no leash, huh? Yeah, it's lazy. Wow. <laughs> it's really, it's great. <laughs> wow. Um, dogs just, I can't even do that with my son. <laughs> I have to hold my son's hand wherever we go. Otherwise he'll wander off. Um, strategy drives structure. This has kind of just popped into my head to talk about this morning. Uh, as it relates to uh, New York City and agencies. I think this is like really relevant. Um, obviously, um, the strategy drives, drives structure is kind of a general theme that means basically in your in your business, the way that you're organized, the way that you're organized. <clears throat> a lot of times, businesses, the organizational structure of a business will drive. <clears throat> what um, the performance, what gets done, and the strategy of the company because you're like, well, we have a marketing department or we have this department and this group's the sales. Um, when, when it should be the strategy of the company that dictates or determines um, the most efficient use of resources and uh, organizational structure. So, for example, like if you have um, different squads that only know how to perform certain, like only work on one part of the app or something, you may need to restructure your squads um, because you're trying to drive a totally different metric or strategy than the resourcing. Uh, um, provides for and oh man I'm out of breath <laughs> I do think the front tire here is a little bit flatter than normal give me a minute god I cannot wait for the electric city bikes but I don't think they're going to come until the new year just doesn't seem likely. And so, okay. And so one example that I could see like a real world example is New York City's fire department. There have been, there's like a report recently um, that basically you see a lot of fire trucks, right? You often, not infrequently see fire trucks sort of blasting through lights, sirens, you know, all the stuff. We see it kind of a fair amount near us. Um, but you don't really see the corresponding number of like fires. There just aren't that many fires. Thank God. Um, they're fairly, they're pretty rare. And so these reports 
confirm that that I don't know what the numbers are exactly but it's that basically the majority of fire truck uh, like using a fire truck and going out for 911 emergencies they're basically just using fire trucks for 911 emergencies um, for paramedics things like that and so literally just this morning I saw in front of our place uh, next door a fire truck and an ambulance now I know historically because we live there there's there, there must be somebody who's who's uh you know kind of sick and has episodes or something because there are every like two or three months there's an ambulance you know it's this kind of a situation it's a it's a 911 sort of situation where all of a sudden you know emergency vehicles are there uh there might be police there might be a fire truck but there's almost always a, an ambulance because i think it's always medical in nature and it's you know fairly uh routine or regular um, but you might be wondering like why is there a fire truck when there's no fire right like and this is this is an example of structure driving like driving strategy in New York City so what I think is happening here and the reports can bear this out but basically when 911 calls come in we basically deploy our fire department as paramedics on emergency situations i've actually personally witnessed this uh one time there was a homeless uh there was really just a person on a park bench uh along morningside park it's like two years ago maybe and saw a fire truck just barreling down two fire trucks i think one big one one smaller one whatever you know they pull up take over the whole street it's like a whole big thing and all because this person was lying on a park bench so there was obviously like no fire it was obviously like paramedics so they jumped out did some paramedic work asked the person some questions um you know and you're like why are we deploying fire trucks when we just need paramedics right like couldn't we be more efficient in allocating our resources so that um you know we have fire trucks like the right number of fire trucks uh to maintain them right and shift some of those resources from maintaining and operating massive vehicles that have to go through these streets when you could maybe shift some of that to you know ambulatory services or whatever i mean there's many different ways of approaching it and that's kind of the strategy right is how might we like improve the quality of care and the speed of res the responsiveness uh to non-emergency or non sorry non-fire related uh emergencies that you know are more like medical emergencies and not fire or police or need like police in the same way you know there's no crime being committed it's just you know it's something else so um i think just sort of seeing this you also see this like i would say this is a good example of like police right now are using the only tool they really like the police themselves are themselves like a tool kit, right? That is a tool that the city can use to uh, realize some um, some goals, right? To reduce crime. Um, but obviously there are more tools, right? You can reduce crime um, in a variety of ways. Better education, more mental health services, gun laws, right? Like there's there's a ton of different things um and so you know if you're like okay well let's go ahead a strategy how might we make morningside park which just it was just a murder last week which is crazy right awful uh really scary and like how might we make 
Morningside Park safer, right? Or, uh, you know, you might even unpack that a little bit. Like, how might you uh, make it safer or perceive better, you know, more safety? How do you perceive safety? And I think the, the like, the tool that police generally have is like, well, people will perceive that they are safer when we have a stronger, bigger, you know, more intense police presence. So put a bunch of cops in cars, kind of at the perimeter, maybe there's more riding around, let's put some floodlights in there, let's have some, you know, all this kind of very visible display. And sure, like that is, that's what they're doing. Now they put a bunch of police by our school, I don't know why, right? Um, but I do know, like, we've been down these kinds of similar roads before. When there's a cyclist who gets killed, it tends to be a bunch of cops that sort of circulate the area. They end up ticketing other cyclists, um, which is, you know, their tool in their tool belt. Like, they don't have too many other options uh, and that's kind of the problem is the structure is driving our strategy so we're like well what can we do and you look back in your tool belt and you're like well we have a bunch of cops they can ticket cyclists we have like we can count those tickets and I guess make that our metric you know the more tickets the better but we also are hampered by various things like if a cop does not directly witness a driver doing something illegal, like going through a red light, going through a stop sign, you know, failing to yield, all that stuff, they're on camera. Like, they're, this is well known, well established stuff. They, police, cannot write a summons. And, like, unless they personally witness it, because they will be called in um, to testify. Um, in the same way that the Tax and Limousine Commission calls a, uh, the complaining witness, which is a citizen, right? Some regular person who filed a, com a complaint and said, I saw this taxi, uh, this Uber um, blocking a bike lane, it was illegal. The TLC has the power to issue a summons when they themselves have not witnessed uh, the incident. Right, they are attorneys that are handling this in more of a like a legal procedure. The cops cannot do that. And so that's kind of like a great opportunity for growth and to improve city agencies and say, well, what do we what do we actually want? Um, do we want structural like limitations to determine what we can and can't do? Right? But again, these are all structural. They were created by people. They can be changed by people. Um, a lot of these changes were not even made by people who were voted in. They were maybe appointed, or they're just like legacy, or they're just bureaucracy. There's no real, you know, when you get down to the core of it, a lot of these limitations are just like, well, it's just the way things have always been. So I guess that's it. We'll never question that for the next hundred years. Um, but there's, I think there's hope because you have like Corey Johnson whose master plan, like the streets, master uh, safe streets plan, I'm, I'm messing up the name, but it basically, when he uh, put this report out and or this law, Polly Trottenberg, who's the head of the DOT, responded and said, well, this is gonna be like a massive restructuring of the DOT. And that's the point. Like what Corey Johnson has figured out is that you have to have restructuring in order to drive the change that you wanna see. You can't continue where the DOT, you know, goes and talks to community boards one at a time and asks permission to like put a little paint on one of the streets and then says no and then, you know, and then the community board is like, no, you need to study it. And then they study it for six years and then shit just gets blocked and blocked and blocked. And then that's what you're left with. 10 years of like kind of stagnation. Um, and instead, if you restructured the limitations 
or the, the rules, right? You might say, all right, like one of the things is when the DOT is repaving any street as part of the repavement, it's an opportunity to restructure the street as a safe street. Um, you know, as a like complete street, adding maybe a protected bike lane, adding paint for cyclists, adding some improved signage. I don't, I don't know exactly the, the details, right? But that seems to make sense, right? To put these things together, connect the dots a little bit and say, okay, well, when you're doing this work, which doesn't happen very often, um, you can also, immediately you have the authority to apply best practices and improve the safety of our streets. You do not need, you know, maybe you don't need as much community involvement. They don't need to tell you, you know, what you can and cannot do. Um, and so that's, there's some examples that I've noticed, good and bad, right? And changes that we can see. Um, I mean, I think they're really, like one of the big changes that I'd love to see is just the ability for, um, for uh, cit uh, citizens to make, to file complaints, right? Where the police don't have to have witnessed the incident. And I think, you know, and then really becomes a question like, should we do this? It, you know, and how would we do it? Uh, I think you just staff, um, you maybe have an agency or something that has um, attorneys. Basically, it's the same thing as the TLC. It's just that they don't have the authority to issue summons to regular drivers. Um, but anyway. So, 9.30, 35 degrees, so I can ride in 35 degree weather. <laughs> Never really know where my cutoff is. My hands are actually nice and toasty. Uh, my feet, not so much. My feet are a little cold, but I am also kind of wearing like pretty like thin sneakers. So certainly not the most appropriate sneakers for this task. These buildings here. Oh man, super tall skyscrapers. Still building them, huh? I thought this one was done, but I don't know what they're doing. I guess they're building some stuff on the side of it. Um, yeah, so I am excited for the electric bikes, the city bike electric bikes. Um, I think I've said that a thousand times. Um, but I don't know when they're coming. delightful over here. So, so here's 7th Avenue is probably a really good example of like bureaucracy and process that has impeded safe streets, right? It's like
Um, oh man. Yeah, this truck is definitely getting through. We deliver Imperial. <coughs> oh, this guy. This guy snuck on through too. And you want to honk. Make sure you honk. That's a fast way. Fast way. It's a misnomer. Fast way is um, making his way into uh, traffic right here. Speedy Boobeezy. Yeah, we're all gonna stop right here. That's what's gonna happen. And then, yeah. So here's the thing, like, they're like, all right, fill up every little crack that you can find here. Whoop. So these guys are like not really doing traffic service very well. They're just like, yeah, fill in that gap. But that's the problem. The gaps are the problem, right? Um, ooh, that's, that's a, a festive bike that guy has. Now they're like, yeah, go ahead. Waving everybody through without like, <laughs> Really looking at who's nearby. This guy's gonna speed. Nice, nice hustle. 8C, Depends on the time of day, but it all makes sense, right? It's exactly what you would expect uh, streets to be, or speeds to be. And fast way. Oh, he just—he—he he was able to pass me, huh? I think we're gonna hit a red light right here. See if Castaway goes through the red light. Hey, he did. He did. And he hit a red light right in front. Nice work. Oh boy. That's tight. Tight squeeze. All right, I'm gonna take off my jacket. Even though it is very cold. City. <laughs> You'd think this area would be like not a shit show in 2019, but you know, it uh, it is. <laughs> you got trucks doing whatever the hell they want. This is weird. Here's a red light, but then a green light. So I actually don't know what the heck this means. It's a, it's a green light. That's weird. Um, ooh, man. I took my jacket off and my gloves because I'm sweating, but now my hands are cold. This 
guy's turning, that's illegal. BMC 117, Lincoln Navigator, just made a left turn. Not allowed, my man. Which one of these options is normal? Boston coach driving a luxury sedan during 9.30 in the morning on a Monday morning, two weeks before Christmas through Midtown. Or me, biking through Midtown. Which one is the preferred option? Which is the thing you would want in your city? Which is the most efficient? Options. Honking like a insane bike. Thank you, Mr. Honky McHonk. What are you honking for? Where are you going? Person's not even looking. This is what bus is this? Oh, it's top view. Three nine nine four five B B, as in Hong Kong. No, <laughs> B B like bike bumper. I don't know. See, the T, hey, you didn't go through red light, but the top you did. So what was the end result of all of that honking? Is this, oops, sorry. Is that bus is now one block ahead of us, but made an insane amount of noise for all the people back there in Times Square, all the tourists. That driver was just honking like a crazy person. Actually, I don't think crazy people would, would honk that much. I don't know, I think just honking like, like as if honking is like, uh, you know, you have a video game console and you can, you know, make all the cars in front of you disappear. But that's not really how it works, right? It's not how honking works. Freight! Spelled incorrectly. That's cool. F R A T E, freight. So here's a cop double parked. Obviously, oh boy. Well, I don't want to get in the way there, that's how you die. Iota, just an iota of work to move their cars, right? Like imagine they had to like tap their foot really hard or like crank a wheel a little bit, burn a few calories, you know? It'd be like totally different. But instead all they have to do is just like, nope, I'll stop, I'm gonna stop. I want to give all these people good, um, something to remember. Not all cyclists uh, just go through red lights. <laughs> but remember, red lights were invented for cars, not for people. And it really should just be a complete pedestrianized space with like one little sliver there for the taxi lineup. And that's kind of it. The rest of it should be 
to be shut down to cars and open up to people. These like 10,000 people who stream out of here every every uh, 10 minutes. But I love it when these guys, hey, don't kill me. Thank you. He saw me. So this is crazy here. I don't really know what I'm supposed to do here, but I think I can weave probably this way. Uh, oh, it's all. Yeah, I don't like this. This is a door zone right here. So this is like any one of these cars could open up their door. It's 30th Street? Oh, it's 30th. Nice. This is my bike lane right here. Squizzy! <laughs> Get out of my way. Um, yeah, it'd be great if uh, uh, Penn Station, all that, all those areas were pedestrianized, as you would like expect. Um, I mean, any any other city that you go to in the world, you get out of the train station, right, and right away you're greeted by. Um, Damn it, all these think hoops here in my goddamn way. Um, except for like LA, right? I think LA's uh, airport is just a total disaster. All right, we are pulling up to a stop here. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. Um, love doing these shows. Love doing these rides. Alright, talk to you soon.